Oh, y'all are Dad, really kind. West Virginia. How y'all doing? Good to see y'all. Good to see you. Great to see all of us. How you do, sir? Oh. Oh, goodness. Well. Bless y'all for waiting on me. You know, I've, uh, I've been all around the universe today. But, uh, but anyway, this, uh, this is really special for me to come here. You know, I was talking to Tommy and outside and, you know, you're a good mayor. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> of course, I know you know this, but uh, it's, to me, it's really special from the standpoint that, you know, my mom grew up just out that way, just a rock's throw. And my dad grew up right up here at Cofferston. I just went by their house and, you know, uh, I can't tell you the number of nails that I nailed in a tree that was, you know, that we cut down there. Probably I made it die, to tell you the truth. But, uh, I, you know, I can't tell you the time that I spent in the coal bin there and playing kick the can in the alley and doing all those things. I can't tell you the number of pears that I ate at my mom's house, you know, that were canned from a pear tree in the front yard that was just spectacular beyond belief. You know, they never had indoor plumbing up there. You know, just uh, this area of the world is me in every single way. And, uh, you know, I was telling Tommy that uh, it's hard to believe that the number of rounds of golf I played with his dad, you know, and, uh, and you know, I can think of my grandparents on my dad's side saying, you know, when dad was stationed in World War II in Texas and, and uh, Southern Texas, and, and you know, I, this is a, the amazing part about this memorial is, I asked my dad over and over and over and over, you know, I would say, Dad, uh, tell me about what went on, you know, in the war, and he would never <coughs> tell me. He didn't tell me anything. I mean, I don't know anything, nothing. And, uh, and yet, the really, one of the only things that I know is, you know, he was flying in the Air Force. He was an Air Force captain. And I guess while he was stationed in Texas, there was a couple times that he was able to, have, to be flying in this area while he was practicing. And he came right down the valley through Copperston, tilted his wings, wouldn't have been able to have told his mom and dad that he was coming. There wouldn't be email or something to say I'm coming. But uh, some way, somehow, either they or somebody saw him. You know, um, what an incredible, incredible county and an incredible people. And uh, I just, I just, you know, can't thank you enough for all you do. And I know we've got a bunch of senators and delegates and everybody here and real dignitaries. There's one, there's one man, I'll never pronounce his name right, and I don't know where in the world I've, oh gosh, I've got this buried alive here. Oh, it's over here. But I'm gonna give it my best, and that's Richard Kaskowicz, is that? That's him. How about that? Yeah. Not, He's 88 years young, served in the Korean War, and, uh, and I guess right beside him is Herbert Elkins. <laughs> 93 years young and served in World War II. And from what I understand, you knew my dad, is that correct? My dad and That's really good, well, really, really good. You know, uh, well, let me just let me just say this: that I know I know things are 
that there's still a lot of people that are hurting right here in this county and right in this area. But I think if you were fair, you'd have to say things are better. Things are yeah. better. At least we're not driving on roads that are tearing our vehicles all to pieces everywhere. We still got stuff to do. And there's people that are shopping around and moving around. We had a good blimp on the screen here with the cold stuff over the last probably 18 months, but now it's getting really tough again and it's scary, you know. Now, let me just say this. I think you've got a fabulous mayor and I think you've got a network of senators and delegates in this area that do good work. And you've got a governor that in all honesty, there is no place on the planet that I'm gonna not try more to try to help than right here. You've got a man right there that walked 19,000 miles to see me. And it was incredible that he did that, you know. And, uh, but you got people here that are just the same as we've always been. And that is you care. You care, you care about your community. You don't want to turn your community loose. You want to, your com community to grow. You want kids to do well. You want all the exact same things that I want. You know, I've said this over and over and over. You do have a governor that doesn't want anything for him. You got a governor that really and truly just wants great stuff for you. Now we got a hole, my God, a living. We had a hole to dig out of like nobody's hole in the world. You know, and we've gotten ourselves, in all honesty, I could sit here and tell you how great, great, great everything's going and everything, all, I, stuff is pretty dead gum good. But all we are is out of the hole. We're just on the launch pad to now go do something. You know, and we can really do it now. We can do it with tourism. We can bring more miners back to work. Lots and lots more miners back to work. We can do it through so many different ways. But let me tell you just this. Today I'm here. You know, I always just speak to you from my heart. You know, I just think that that's what I should do. I don't have a pat speech that I'm reading to you. You know, I just tell you from my heart. We're here to dedicate or to put monies towards a memorial. And this says, I am pleased to advise you that I have approved a $26,000 grant for the town of Oceana from the governor's contingency fund. The grant is to, and that's just dollars that I have, you know, that I can appropriate. And, and the grant is to assist in completion of the Veterans Memorial in Oceana, Wyoming County, West Virginia. We are pleased to work with you to make this memorial, uh, memorial a reality for the citizens of Wyoming County. Now, <laughs> let me say this and I've got I've got to tell you again speaking from my heart our veterans these gentlemen several of, of y'all several that have now passed on my dad my mom's family had 10 kids 10 kids my dad was an only child 10 kids think about this Three of the 10 were in the war at the same time. You know, think about it. Think about how in the world the parents survived. My mom, my grandmother and grandfather up here in, uh, in Copperston, they had no other children. Their only child in the war. You know, how did they make it? You know, how did my grandfather on my mom's side, you know, have a job in the mines, as most everybody did, and come home and work a garden all the time. Yeah. How did he do it? You know how he did it? And Pose, who's the only living one of the family, said his dad, he used to ask his dad, and he said, son, it's the only way that I could survive. Nice. The only way I could make it. 
I couldn't absolutely just lay everything down to where I, I just had to keep doing something all the time. I was worried to death about those boys. You know, let me tell you, last story. I was in Barbersville, and I've told this story a bunch of times, but it, it tells everything. I was in Barbersville at one of the facilities for the veterans. And I asked them, this is the second session we were in. I said, to, I said, we were in session, meaning that laws were being passed. Stuff was being done. I said, what can I do? Name me the most important thing to you of all things. What would be the most important thing to you that I could get done of everything? And this guy stood up, you know, and he was an older gentleman, kind of halfway trembling a little bit and everything. And he said, he said, well, Governor, if you could get our retirement exempted from income tax, that would be the only thing we would really want. Now, there's lots of only things, you know. And I said to him, because I didn't have a clue, I said, well, what would that cost? Do you have any idea what that would cost the state? And he said, well, our studies, and he knew, he knew what he was talking about. And he said, our studies say it would cost between 2.7 and 3.2 million dollars. Now, it sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But you know, in the scope of things, in the state of West Virginia, we run on an annual budget right now of 4.5 billion dollars. You know how, how much that is? For every billion, that's a thousand millions. He asked for 2.7 of a thousand millions, and we're, we have 4.5. We have 4,500 millions. 4,500 millions. In all honesty, I sat there and felt like, you know, and it's just the same all the time. It's just these people that are our veterans that give and have given us every single thing we live for. Everything. For crying out loud, everything. We owe them everything. Everything. That's all there is to it. Anybody that doesn't think that, shame on them. You know? We owe them everything. And they never hardly ask for anything. They ask so little, and they've given us so much. I absolutely, I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes because I'm thinking, for crying out loud, it's just pathetic. It's pathetic that it hadn't already been done. And so we went back. I wrote it up. These great legislatures and everything ran with it. You know, as my bill went up, boom, 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 and done. You know, so all I can say is I'm sorry for the past that it, it didn't get done before I got there. And I'm thankful that when I got there, somebody told me what to do. But today, today we're going we're gonna to finish a memorial in Oceana that maybe everybody can come by and see. And maybe the kids will be taught the reflection that they need to be taught just how important and everything that freedom is never really free. Right. And uh, a lot of people paid a lot of big prices. And so all I can say to you is, um, I, you know, you're never going to have to doubt my love for your county, for this incredible town, and all of y'all. So I thank you, and I'd say to you, God bless in every way, shape, form, or fashion, and I'm really proud to do it. I'm really, really proud to do it. I don't know who I'm getting. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just leave this with someone. Who am I leaving it with? Danny. Yeah, and, and Danny, I, maybe you can tell us more about this, okay? Yeah, that would be really good. Okay, sir. How are you, sir? How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm going to hold it there where you... We're building this memorial, and it will have a wall at the back of it with veterans oh, sure. who have served. But the stones down front are the one that was killed in action in World War I, World War II, 
Korea and Vietnam, civil war and Mideastern conflicts, but it'll be backed up by a black granite wall mm. with the names of veterans from everywhere, honorably discharged veterans, people who have went out and sacrificed for us that we could be free. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to cost all together, we're going to have a little better than uh, $85,000 in it. Yeah. We already have, as of the present, we have the wall put up. We have footers for the big stones to go in. We have already poured concrete across the road for that memorial, and we have plans on expanding it after we get everything done on the left-hand side. Hopefully, this will be a tourist attraction for a lot of people because if we can get it pulled off like I've been trying to plan, 11, 11, at 11 a.m. in the morning, we're going to dedicate it. And there's going to be people here from several states who said they want to come and see the names of their veterans on that wall. And we've had a, we started this uh, first car stop we had in our town was on the 17th of January, and we figured we'd all freeze to death. We had great weather. Right. We yeah. really did. Yeah. Every car stop we've had, we've had five. The town has had five. We collected uh, anywhere between twelve to fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars at every car stop. We could have started at twelve and quit at five, but we're all old. We started at twelve and quit at three. <laughs> and, and we had several car stops. Matter stop, I stopped you over in Pine. Yeah, you did. We had car stops three, over there. Three three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I was asking. <laughs> good, so good. I guess it worked. And, and the people, the community, has really come together to see this happen. They have given when they really couldn't. People I know that I thought just couldn't give you a dime, they take the last money they had out of their change purse and dump it. Yep. And I appreciate everything everybody's done. We've had a couple big donations from several people, and we do appreciate that. We would like for everybody to be up there on the day that we have our dedication to to celebrate it with us, the veterans, for what what we have done for our country. That's the reason we're there. We're proud of our country. We're proud of our state. And we're proud of this little town and the community around it. Yep. And I really appreciate you all helping us finish it. No, that's good. That's great. Thank you very much. No, thank you, sir. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I know. Uh, you will. That's really good. Well, you see, it's just all, it's always the same. I mean, you know, he stood up here, he thanks everybody, 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 everybody. You know, we need to thank Benny, too. I mean, that's all there is to it. Well, that's all we got, unless we got something else. You know, if y'all want to ask any questions or anything, I'll sit here and answer. I'll be with you. But I, you know, I don't want to hold you up anymore. I've already held you up enough. I came across 99, and, uh, you know, I got to tell you this, that, you know, you, you, this hard, I mean, all this is hard to believe, but uh, I, was wor I was out of school, and I think, or I was maybe in school, when, but Basilio and Grogan and my dad's companies and everything, they were all together all the time. You know, they, you know my dad and Mr. Basilio did all kinds of things together. And, uh, and, but they were building that road. And, you know, yeah, sure. When was it built? 60s. In, had, yeah, yeah. Late 60s. Late, yeah, yeah, mid yeah, to late 60s, yeah. 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 I know one of the project engineers that was out there on the job, his name's Dale Wright, and uh, Dale's still living, but it was, they, kept up, they kept up and they counted all the rattlesnakes that they killed. <laughs> and they, they, they killed a lot of rattlesnakes, I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> probably right. Probably right. Well, listen, I don't want to hold y'all up. Y'all leave. Y'all have kind of out loud. Y'all have done really good, and I'm really proud of you, and I'll be here when they, on the dedication day. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. Man. Thank all y'all.
All right, get up, get up, y'all get. Up.